Today we're going to look at a President Walker Limited. Sounds like a company, doesn't it? Um, so I've not really been that impressed with the President sets. I, I was always put off because the KP77 was the only uh, President set we ever saw in the UK um, as, a, as a UK legal radio. And then suddenly Presidents popped in about 2010 with some other offerings. Um, I know traditionally they've, some of them have been Uniden. This one's made in Vietnam. So I don't recall we've done this before and I haven't got a service manual, but I'm going to see if I can download a service manual from the internet. So to do that, I'd better open it up because if I recall, President to have the same names time and time again. It's a bit like Ford Escort, you know, they they do these, uh, and Nissan Sunny, you know, they do these same names with loads and loads of models over a long period of time. And that's great. So, oops, try not to lose these screws. This uh, customer lives in Sheffield, and he's asked me to optimise this set. Clearly he's bought it and he's disappointed. So uh, we'll see what we can do with it for him. I've got a sneaking impression it's not going to have a real channel selector switch. It'll be a rotary encoder. Let's have a feel. Doesn't feel real to me. No. So we have to unsolder the speaker, so it's not a plug-in speaker. The re I'm, I thought I'm going to have to take this lid off because I'm going to have to match this up to what I can spot on uh, on the internet with the kind of layout I've got to, because of the, the variations. But at least we can see we've got some adjustments. I know some of the current models have got no adjustments. Uh, so hopefully it's not a, a menu driven thing. Uh, and before we start on it, we'll do a we'll do a before and we'll do an after with the uh, with the readings. Then I can't be accused of fixing it worse. <laughs> um, so I'm doing this on Friday. Um, Mr. Chip is um, away from here until Tuesday. So if we do this today and we publish this today, the scratchy corner test will be Tuesday. So this will be this week's set. We're only doing one set a week. I've had a box in with about six, so uh, that'll be six weeks' work. As you know, we're concentrating on that pipe organ restoration. At the end of the day, that's our main business. And um, I've told all the um, trade customers that we have in two-way radio not to send in any repairs until next year. So the only CB jobs that come in are going to be from end users this year. And I say we're doing those at a scale of one per week, just to help out, really. We never did any end-user jobs till lockdown happened, but, uh, you know, if it helps people, well, there you go. So grey was to the left, which is negative. I'll be quizzing you on that later. Right, I'll disappear off with this. We'll pause the video and we'll see if I can find a service manual. Okay, so I've been able to download a service manual. Um, not formatted how I would <laughs> expect. I think it's kind of coming at some point as a fax to somebody. And so it hasn't quite gone over the pages as one would expect but uh, nevertheless um, it's very readable and very welcome and it's a good manual and it's clearly a Uniden based product um, so just looking at some of the um, the blurb let's have a look um, 0.5 of a microvolt for 20 decibel cyanide, it says. So I'm not quite, quite sure if I believe that. What is uh, good is uh, one and a half amps maximum transmit current. Because some of these uh, new radios are, are drawing two and a half amps plus. We use three amp power supplies on the bench because 
Citizens Band radios for the UK are going to be drawing usually around 1 to 1.2 amps. Good. So, we, this radio doesn't need the VCO doing because the customer's not said that the channel's dropping out. But because we've got the manual in front of us and for the demonstration purposes, I will just check the VCO voltages. Now, a lot of this involves being on the um, CPT set of channels rather than the UK set of channels, which is going to be frustrating for me, but um, nevertheless we will do it for the purpose of this video. So we'll connect that to our usual crocodile clips that I enjoy shorting out. I'd better set the current limit a bit higher than we normally would. Put that adapter to one side because I was doing a business radio the other day. And we're going to want the microphone, which is a six pin one. So switch on the power supply. And we'll set that to, it says 13.2 volts. I'm going to set it to, I've just turned it to 13.7. So switch it on. It's on UK set of channels. Do you have to faff about with this every time then? I haven't got the foggies. Do I have to press something? Oh, here we go. Um, can we have some radios that are intuitive? Okay, so I'm going to now have to switch off the uh, record and I'm going to have to look at a copy of the instruction book to see how to actually get it onto the right set of channels. Okay, so page 28, I think English is the third language in the, um, in the instruction book. Frequency band must be chosen according to the country, switch the radio off, select the F off. <laughs> Isn't that swearing in Britain? <laughs> the F off to F position. Switch the radio on. So we're going to choose CPT. I suppose it's EEC. And then what do we do? And then switch the F off switch to off. And then switch off the radio and back on again. Hey! Wait till I tell Mr. Chippy that this radio has an F off switch. Okay. It's a bit disconcerting that you've got a red light on there, isn't it? like it's in transmit to my mind now what they have done is they highlighted in red what you're messing about with on transmit and then when we get to the receive section they've highlighted in red what you're messing about with on trans on, on receive So connect a voltmeter to test point 301. And they want the radio to be sideways on your bench, but um, we'll have to have the service manual sideways. The test point 301 is the top of that resistor there. So we'll get our trusty Aldi multimeter out. 
don't know whether this is negative earth or whether it is a floating chassis we're about to find out I'll just connect that to my trusty crocodile clip negative earth so it says here connect a voltmeter to test point 301 on channel 40 so we'll select channel 40 there we go 40 and make sure that's in the screen and we should have on transmit 2 volts plus or minus 0.2 now that's within the limit so I'm not going to adjust it and then on and it would be L302 we'd be fiddling with the transmit L302 is that one with the wax in it then for receive it's 2.5 volts plus or minus 0 0.2 and as you can see that's within 0 0.2 at 2.35 and we'd be adjusting L301 if we felt that was naughty which is that one in receive and then we go to channel 1 and on receive they want it to be around 2.2 plus or minus 0 0.2 which it is and on transmit they want it to be 1.8 plus or minus 0 0.2 so there we go they then want you to do the, trans the, the frequency I don't do this with a frequency counter we do it with the test set and so CT301 which is going to be that one I'll just verify it is is our transmit frequency now the test set's only been on 20 minutes so I although I'm going to test it now I'll switch picture in picture on what I will do is come back to it So we're going to be on channel, uh, yeah, they say channel 20, which is what we would do. Twenty-seven two oh four eight oh. So it wants pulling up a bit. These are 2019, these sets, so at least it is adjustable. It's always the wrong way, isn't it? 27205, look at that, nearly spot on. Just slightly high. So that's as far as we go with, that's what they have you do with the phase lock loop section. And as these sets get older or they get fiddled with, that's going to be something which is going to need looking at. But this is in its box, and I presume he's bought it new. Now, annoyingly, they have you start on AM, and we wouldn't normally do AM, but it's customer set. Um, so we switch it to AM. Except you can't, can you, because we're in the wrong country. Um, if we're in CE, is it EU then for um, giving us uh, AM? Yes, it is. Right. Um, so, RT202.
supposed to be setting this for one watt. Why? Well, it's three watts now. I, I think that's uh, how it used to be, didn't it? I think it's four watts everywhere now, isn't it? So, R2202... T202 RT203 isn't there these days so RT202 for 4 watts so stuff the 1 watt it needs to be 4 And then go to FM and adjust the one that isn't there for 4 watts. So let's go and check. I'm not showing you the right um, meter here. So we've got 4 watts there on FM as well. So they've obviously changed the circuit to take into consideration that it's now 4 watts on AM and FM in Europe. Now, oh, he's got an he's got an S meter that reads RF. So RT two hundred one is the RF meter. There, there. So we'll tilt it up, and I hope that we can all see it. So I've got it in the centre of the red zone, which is what you would expect to do. It says something about reading S9, but that's, that's bizarre to me. Um, <laughs> deviation. RT206. And they want you to set it for one and a half kilohertz. Well, we want to set it for 2.2 .2 kilohertz. 206. 205, Well, the board says that it says deviation there. So whatever, whatever the man, lovely errors, aren't they? Let's look what the deviation is. I, I should have, um, I should have been noting this as a before and after, shouldn't I? And I haven't done. Um, so the power was doing um, something like two point seven watts. Let's look at deviation. I'm going to have to retune our deviation meter because this is all being done on CPT channels. Wallo. It's actually 2.11 to Wallo. So it's been, I think it's been adjusted at some point. One to Wallo. One to Wallo. Wallo. Well, that seems to be where we want it to be. It's a bit funny, but uh, there you go. So we've done that. So 
So switching to AM, they want you to adjust RT204 for 90%. Sounds about right. Switch it to AM. Switch the test set to AM. One, two, one. That's, that's over the top, actually. 204. Is that one. So go back to the little oscillator. One, two, that's a bit better. So, and then you've got automatic level control to adjust 90% as well. 205. Is the next one along? Just check that. One, two, one, low. It's probably a bit more sensitive. So I think that's covered everything in transmit. Good, it has. Over to receive. And at least it's got adjustments, which is, I think is nice. So they're going to have you tune these up on AM. Um, do, 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 do. It's easy to sit tune it up on AM, I, I admit. Let's see how we go with like that. Um, so I want 27205 on the signal generator. I, you know what? No, 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 no. This needs to be set on channel 40 of CPT or channel 1 of UK, doesn't it? doesn't want to be on otherwise when we put it to, to UK channels it'll be not at its peak performance and chances are it's going to be using that I tell you what we'll do it on channel one of UK channels that's the sensible thing to do so once again we'll switch this thing off and press the F off button switch it back on select UK Switch that off, switch that off, switch it back on again, and select channel 1. So now we'll put in 27, out of curiosity, I'll see what it's transmitting on UK channel 1. Oh, it's actually doing about 4.1 watt. Right, so over to 2760125. Oh, We're going to tune this up on, on FM as we normally would do. Stuff what the manual says because we're not aiming for optimum performance on the e e EU set of channels. The chances are he's not going to use them anyway. If he's in Sheffield, I don't expect there's anything on. So it's L136. So. L1, L3, L6, L7, 8, 9, 10. 7, 8, 9, 10. So is that going to be the... I think that's the detector. It's been said in the service manual in a very clumsy way. So we'll go for that first. We'll put the oscilloscope on. Better plug in the instruments to the extension speaker jack. Does that put it on CPT then? When it's in UK? We'll see. 
So right now, we have got... We've got very good sensitivity, there's no denying that. The 12 dB cyanide. Yeah, for 12 decibel cyanide it's doing 0 0.4 microns. Now they say for 20 dB it will do 0 0.5. Well, there's 20 and it will do 1.8. So I think that was a bit far-fetched. But of course, there's, um, between instrumentation there's tolerance. So, uh, do I need to make a note of that? 0 0.6 microvolts, did I say? Let's go back to that. Not point four microvolts for 12 dB cyanide. Okay. So we'll start by doing that detector. So I'm putting S9 equivalent signal on the test set. 100 microvolts and we'll just put the camera over to the oscilloscope and I'll adjust L11 that was already spot on so that's good so we'll go over to the cyanide meter now and we'll drop the attenuator till we get 0. Point, oh, sorry, not till we get 4 dB cyanide. The idea is that we're not saturating the receiver so that the adjustments we do are actually going to uh, make the set better. So, here we go. So, no difference there. Slight difference there. Slight difference there, we'll drop the attenuator. No difference there. No difference there. I think these will be ones to do with the IF, so I don't think they're gonna show up here. Oh, there they are. Just gonna put more signal on to see whether it's better to adjust them at, with a higher signal. Yeah, I think it is. And let's see what now what we've got as a cyanide reading. So I've got 0 0.3 on that scale. And I've got 0 0.33 on that scale. So minute improvement from 0 0.4 to 0 0.33. We'll, we'll give it that, 0 0.33. In reality, no one's going to notice the difference. What we have done is bring that power up from about 2.7 watts to 4 watts. So, um, I want to recheck that in AM, that one. Uh, could affect AM, but we'll come back to that. So, S meter is RT1. So, They want minus 67 dBm, whatever that is. I'd have to look. I'd have to look at my lookup chart. But uh, we're going to be doing uh, 100 microvolts, and that's where we are right now. So, oh, it's spot on. It's it's absolutely, isn't it? Absolutely spot on. But just for the 
video RT2. Is that one? So I can turn it down, I can turn it up. So there we go, back where it was. Now we're going to have to go over to AM because uh, they want you to do the squelch setting in AM and that's fair enough if they want me to do that. So we'll select AM, we'll go to 27205 on the signal generator. So channel 20... Oh, we've got to go back to messing about with this. No. There we go. Channel 20 AM. Let's see what they want you to do. Oh, for a start, we'll just I'll just see whether I can just set that how I wanted it. That sounds more meaningful. Right, uh, so RT1 is squelch. So connect this uh, test generator. Um, right, well, I'll set this how I how I want it to be, rather than how they want it to be. So we've got the squelch coming in when we've got the squelch coming in at one millivolt which is too high so I'm going to adjust that till it comes into 100 microvolts which is how we would normally set them so it's RT1 which we're fiddling with which is that one there so I'm going to adjust this now until I can hear the uh, test set hopefully there we go then I'll back it off 30 microvolts 100 microvolts that's how I want it so I'm going to now test it at the bottom end of the scale. So I'm going to turn it, that's auto squelch, we'll turn it to threshold. It's difficult in AM, isn't it? Because you can hardly hear it at the bottom end. So I've turned the signal generator to standby. I really ought to show you this, the uh, attenuator controls. We'll switch the signal generator back on with it parked at 0 0.3 of a microvolt. It hasn't come in. So it's coming in at 0 0.35 of a microvolt. No, it's not. It's coming. I'm lying to you. It's coming in at 1.1 microvolts. I wonder if we can set that finer than that. Let's try again. Let's try again. Yeah, that's better, I think. So... Yeah, 0.6 of a microvolt it's coming in, disappearing at 0.5 of a microvolt, so that's better. Let's try it on FM, which is what I'm used to doing. Signal generator on. On FM it's coming in at 0.7 microvolts, leaving at 0.6, so that's fine. So on... The auto squelch, I don't think we're going to alter that, uh, to be honest. Let's see where it's set.
comes in at about three microvolts, which is probably where you want it to be. So I'd, uh, with a lookup chart, I'd have to um, set that to 17 dB. We could do it with a cyanide meter, but uh, let's see where we are with that. They actually want it to come in about 10 microvolts, which is too coarse. Okay. I think we're done. I think we are. Yep. So it's nice that the S meter and the RF meter are adjustable. Um, it's nice that there are adjustments on the receiver. Pity they're coming out of the factory doing 2.7 watts. Oh, and I've got a, a leg that has gone to sleep. Yep, yeah, we're all done. So I'm going to just pop the lid back on and... Just solder that back on. Okay, so we put it back together, switch it on, and take it out of this useless EU thing. Uh, so it's the oh, it's the F off button. Select UK. One nine a Roger. Nice to hear somebody having a sensible conversation. I'm not. I don't know whether it holds its. Me if I if I take the power off at the power supply. I don't know whether it comes back on on the channel you're working on or whether it comes back on on some other channel. How bizarre. It, it came on on a random channel then. Nineteen a Roger. Okay. Well, there we are. So, Tuesday we'll do a scratchy corner test with Mr. Chippy, and then that can go back to the customer. So, we have it, the President Walker Limited, from about 1919, 19... 1919? No, it's not that old, from 2019. Uh, I don't know whether it's still a current model. But, um, I mean, that, that looks a lot better than most offerings, I have to admit. It's a Unidem-made set in Vietnam.